Hi, Bakerfield. Miss Solomon here with Chapter 19, The Inventing Room, Everlasting Gobstoppers and Hair Toffee. When Mr. Wonka shouted, Stop the boat! The Oompa Loompas jammed their oars into the river and backed water furiously. The boat stopped. The Oompa Loompas guided the boat alongside the red door. On the door, it said, Inventing room, private, keep out. Mr. Wonka took a key from his pocket, leaned over the side of the boat and put the key inside the keyhole. This is the most important room in the entire factory, he said. All my most secret new inventions are cooking and simmering in here. Old Ficker Gruber would give his front teeth to be allowed inside for just three minutes. So would Prodnose and Slugworth and all the other rotten chocolate makers. But now listen to me. I want no messing around when you go inside. No touching, no meddling, no tasting. Is that agreed? Yes, yes, the children cried. We won't touch anything. Up to now, Mr. Wonker said, nobody else, not even. The Oompa Loompas had ever been allowed in here. He opened the door and stepped out of the boat into the room. The four children and their parents all scrambled after him. Don't touch, shouted Mr. Wonka, and don't knock anything over. Charlie Bucket stared around the gigantic room in which he now found himself. The place was like a witch's kitchen. All about him, black metal pots were boiling and bubbling on huge stoves and kettles were hissing. Pans were sizzling and strange iron machines were clanking and spluttering. There were pipes running all over the ceilings and walls and the whole place was filled with smoke and steam and delicious rich smells. Mr. Wonka himself had suddenly become even more excited than usual. And anyone could see this room he loved best of all. He was hopping about among the saucepans and the machines like a child among Christmas presents, not knowing which thing to look at first. He lifted the lid from the huge pot and took a sniff. Then he rushed over and dipped a finger into the barrel of the sticky yellow stuff he had to taste. Then he skipped across to one of the machines and turned half of a dozen knobs this way and that. Then he peered anxiously through the glass door of the gigantic oven, rubbing his hands and crackling with delight at what he saw. Then he ran over to another machine, a small shiny affair that kept going. And every time he went, the large green marble dropped out of it into a basket on the floor. At least it looked like a marble. Never less. God stoppers, cried Mr. Walker proudly. They're completely new. I'm inventing them for children who aren't given very little pocket money. You can put an everlasting gobstopper in your mouth and you can suck and suck and suck and suck and suck and suck and, suck and, suck and you will never get any smaller. It will never get any smaller. It's like gum, cried Violet Beauregard. It's not like gum, Mr. Wonka said. Gum is for chewing. And if you try chewing one of these gobstompers here, you would break your teeth off. But they taste terrific. And they change, they, they change color once a week. And they never get any smaller. They never disappear. Never. At least I don't think they do. There's one of them being tested this very moment in the testing room next door. And Oompa Loompa is sucking it. He was has been sucking it for merely a year now without stopping. And it's still just as good as ever. Now over here, Mr. Wonka went on, skipping excitedly across the room to the opposite wall. Over here, I'm inventing a completely new line of toffees. He stopped beside a large saucepan. The saucepan was full in thick, gooey purple trickle, boiling and bubbling. 
By standing on his toes, little Charlie could see inside. That's hair toffee, cried Mr. Wonka. You eat one tiny bit of that, and in exactly a half an hour, a brand new, luscious, thick, silky, beautiful crop of hair will start growing out of all over your top of your head. And a mustache and a beard. Beard, cried Baruka Salt. Who wants a beard for heaven's sakes? It would suit you very well, said Mr. Wonka. But unfortunately, the mixture is not quite ready yet. I've got it too, uh, I've got it too strong. It works too well. And I tried it on the Oompa Loompa yesterday in the testing room and immediately he, a huge beard started shooting out of his chin. A beard grew so fast that it was trailing all over the floor like a thick, hairy carpet. It was growing faster and we could, we could cut it. Then we could cut it. In the end, we had to use a lawnmower to keep it in check. But I'll get the mixture right soon. And when I do, there will be no excuse anymore for little boys and little girls to have bald heads. But Mr. Wonka said, my TV, little boys and little girls never do go about with, don't argue, my dear child, please don't argue, cried Mr. Wonka. It's such a waste of precious time. Now over here, if you will, I'll step this way. I will show you something that I'm terrifically proud of. Oh, do be careful. Don't knock anything over and stand back. 